behind me, Craig. Are we on? Oops. Yes, I went. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Talking to that again, real quick. Say something again. Does it sound good? No, uh, keep talking. How are you doing? How's your week? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Oh, I'm hanging in there. Good. How about you, Ben? I want to see if I'm on. I think I am. All right. All right cool. Are we good? Keep talking for me, if you would. Okay, I'll keep talking if I can. <laughs> good looking people out here today. We're ringing a little bit. You are ringing a little bit. But I can probably make that work. Talk again for me. You. Yeah. All right, you're good, I think. You're off right now, I think. You're on. Okay, good. I know which one is you, and then I know which one is your husband. So, all right, I'm good. I'm good. I have you off. All right.
Christmas With every Christmas card I write May your days be merry and bright And may all your Christmas your heart be light from now on our troubles will be out of sight have yourself a merry little Christmas Make the Yuletide gay From now on Our troubles will be miles away Here we are as an old
Merry Christmas. Let's try that again. Merry Christmas. Good morning. It is great to have you with us here this morning. want to welcome all of you who have gathered strong with us this morning. Thanks for being part of the Christmas gathering with us today. And also want to welcome everyone who's online with us right now. Thanks for joining us this morning. If you're online with us, we encourage you like the video, share this with other people, and comment. Let us know that you're here with us this morning. Well, thank you for being here today, and we're excited to share this Christmas gathering with you. Uh, we're going to have our cookies and drinks after the program. We don't expect the program to be a really long program this morning. So plan to stay around afterwards, get some cookies, get some drinks and uh, hot drinks, and just enjoy the day. So as you're coming in, I know we still have some in the hallways. If you can hear my voice, start making your way this way. Uh, when the program starts, there's going to be a lot of movement going on. So we want to clear the walking path for that. Our kids are super excited in leading us in the Christmas story this morning. So uh, I can't wait for you to see what they've been preparing and grateful for them and for Pastor Scott and our worship team. For, and then uh, also for Rebecca Ruckel is the child, one of our children's ministry directors and she wrote the script for this morning. Can we hear for Rebecca? <laughs> grateful for Rebecca. There she is right there. <laughs> All right, well, we are looking forward to celebrating with you this morning. While you're finding your seat, we want to keep you informed on what's going on. So if you're in the hallways or in the back, come in and find your seat, and uh, we're going to roll some announcements while you do that. And I do want to remind us that there is some space over here in the safety zone. Uh, if you're in this space, then this is a mask required area um, unless you're in your seat. And then we're not doing any kind of physical contact in this area either. So just a little extra precaution over here. So if you're a little too crowded or you need a little more space, then this area is available for you as long as you're able to follow those guidelines, okay? All right, so let's roll those announcements. If you're in the hallways, come on in, find your seat, and then we'll start our Christmas program. Oh, hey, good morning. You caught me here sipping on my coffee, standing in front of my Christmas tree. I promise I do this every morning. No, it's great to see you guys. If you're here, you found a great place. This is Western Hills Church. We are a church without walls. We are a family, and we love that you're here joining us, whether you're in person or online. So today, we have some announcements that some of my friends are going to share with you. So let's get to it. Hey, we'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you guys uh, to Western Hills Church, especially the guests that are here with us today. Uh, it's great to see you guys. We have an online connect form for you to fill out. If you just go to www.westernhillschurch.com forward slash connect. Fill out your connect card and one of our staff will get back in touch with you. It's great to see you. Have a Merry Christmas. My favorite Christmas tradition is our candlelight service held here at Western Hills Church in this very auditorium. And I want to invite you to join us. It's Christmas Eve from five to six, so it's a really short time commitment, but it's a really awesome time of just worshiping together and celebrating our Savior. I really hope that you'll come. Here at West Hills Church, Christmas Eve, five to six. Merry Christmas. Throughout church history, the Bible has been best understood and applied when it is read in Christian community. God has linked himself to his word in such a way that the two are inseparable so that as we get to know God's word, we get to know God. That's why we wanna invite you to read the Bible together with us in 2021. You can visit the Right Now announcement page and you can join the Bible reading plan today. Our reading plan will begin on January 1st. Would you read the Bible with me next year? I hope you will. Hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. I want to give you an update on what your tithes and offerings have gone towards this past week. At Flood this week, we had Flood the Halls, where we had about 35 students come and participate. And we were able to share the Christmas story with them and share the gospel and just spend time with them. And it was really awesome to have that many kids come uh, to Flood this week. We haven't had that many come in a while because of COVID. And so I want to thank you for your tithes and your offerings that allowed us to put on that event and other events this year to bring students in, like the Pumpkin Smash, and uh, some things we did over the summer. Uh, I want to just encourage you all to continue to give generously. We set a goal at the beginning of the year for what we would like our budget to be, and we've done well, but we're a little bit short. And I just want to ask you, what can you give above and beyond your normal tithes to help make up ground 
and so that we can finish out the year strong with a, a good budget. Thank you again for your tithes and offerings and have a Merry Christmas. Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for coming to the Christmas gathering. The service will begin soon. Uh, blessings to you and your family and tell them Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Well, good morning. I want to set, set you up a little bit today. You have all been invited to a family gathering at Grandma and Grandpa's house. Okay. And uh, this is real realistic. Okay. It's, it's a COVID gathering. So Grandma and Grandpa are separated from everybody. Can't have any contact with them. And um, what else makes this realistic is um, we put all these invitations out to the family and way more came than we expected. So I'm hoping we have enough food for everyone, okay? Uh, we're so glad you're here with us today. Uh, the children have really um, spent a lot of time working on this together, and um, I am so looking forward to being here with you all. This is a great gathering today. So let the festivities begin. I am so excited, Linda, that all of the grandchildren are going to be over here today. You think, I can hardly wait. You think all of them are coming? I think they all are. Everybody seemed to be healthy and well, and I'm just excited I about know. it. I know. It's been a long time since we've got to see them. I haven't seen some in, yeah, in quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, I know. That's true. I know. Well, are you ready? Well, <laughs> I'm never really completely prepared <laughs> for all the kids coming, but... What about you? I think I'm as ready as I'm going to ever be. That's probably right. Well, I think that's some of them there now. Hey, welcome. And you guys look sharp. Good to see you guys here. Wow. Man, y'all look great in your costumes. Thank you. Really look good. We're excited that you're here. <laughs> Whoops! I lost my ears. What do I do? Put them back on? Okay, let's do it. Hey, we're glad you're here. You know what? I think we've got some food that we can eat. I think we can decorate the tree. We can sing some songs. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah that sounds good. I tell you what, why don't you go ahead and start decorating the tree? Yeah, we'll do that. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandpa. Hi. Hi. Hey, we're so glad that y'all are here. Come on in. Oh, I love your costumes. You look so cute. Hi, Grandma. I tell you what, why don't we try and sing some songs? What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Yeah? Sound good? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us Sounding joy. 
like about everybody is here now. Grandma tells me that you have a special something you're going to show us today. Does that explain the costumes? Yes, we have been working on it for a long time. We want it to be a big surprise. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're excited. Uh, Over 2,000 years ago, in a city called Nazareth, there was a young woman who was called Mary. Mary was promised to marry a man named Joseph who lived there too. One day, an angel from God came and talked to Mary. Hi, I'm an angel sent by God to give you a message. You are going to have a son. God wants you to call him Jesus. His name means Savior. He is very important. God is with you, and he will make this possible. I am God's servant. May the words you say come true. Now, Joseph was not sure what to do when he heard that Mary was going to have a baby. <laughs> One night, while he was asleep, the angel came to talk to Joseph, too. Joseph, do not be afraid. Go and take Mary as your wife. She is going to have a son because God has made this possible. You are going to name him Jesus. His name means Savior. He is very important. A 
while later, the emperor in Rome, Caesar Augustus, said that everyone had to go to their hometown to be counted. Mary and Joseph went to Joseph's hometown of Bethlehem. <laughs> well, there were lots of other people in Bethlehem, too. There were so many people, in fact, that there was no room for them in the inn. So they stayed in a stable, which is a place where the animals stayed warm and dry. There was a cow there. There was a sheep there. There was a chicken there. While they were there, baby Jesus was born. And Mary took him and wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger. That night, there were some shepherds out in the fields watching over their flocks of sheep. Do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good news. Today, a new Savior has been born to you. He is very important. He's in Bethlehem. You will find him wrapped in a blanket and laying in a manger. left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
One day, after Jesus had been born, some wise men came to Bethlehem looking for the newborn king. They had been following a star. When they saw the star, they were excited. They bowed and they worshipped him. They knew that Jesus was a very important baby. They presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That was so awesome. You did a great job. That was great. That was wonderful. That was a great presentation. You know, I have a favorite story, and I would like to share that story right now. But I think that the grandkids and the sound and the music and everybody that helped deserves another clap. Let's honor them in that. I'll tell you, that was well done. Well done. Well, here we are again. Christmas time, one of the busiest times of the year. I hope all of you have got presents for everybody that you wanted to get presents for. Uh, there's a new thing called online shopping. I haven't stepped in a store this year. It's uh, been kind of amazing, but it is a busy time. Wrapping the gifts and trying to get them to who you wanted to get them to. And unfortunately, in many ways, the real story of Christmas that we have just seen has been kind of hijacked and replaced with bits and pieces of something else. Somehow, in, in many homes, the true story of Christmas has been replaced. But this morning, we have reviewed what the real Christmas story is all about. And I'm going to go over some of the same lines that they did out of Scripture because this is the true meaning of Christmas. But this morning, let's review that story of the birth of child, the birth of that child that was born in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago. 
Actually, this story is about the greatest gift that was ever given. The story of grace, mercy, peace, and hope. Story of humility, story of sacrifice. The story of, of the God of heaven looking down over his creation and sending his son to be the gift of life to a lost and dying world. This is the amazing story of Christmas. It's the story of the cradle to the cross. What do these words kind of mean to you? When I think of the cradle, I go back, Linda, <laughs> 50-something years ago, or over 50 years ago, when we had two in the cradle and I'm thinking of many sleepless nights that my wife had <laughs> and I was thinking of just thinking of myself of thinking what are my abilities to raise a child and so I was questioning all of those and with the greatest anticipation of what will these boys become To me, the cradle is a symbol of innocence and expectation, where the cross, on the other hand, is pretty much tied up in death, in suffering, torture, sacrifice. And I'm wondering how in the, wor how in the world can these two things, these two words even be reconciled together at the time of Christmas. The truth is, the greatest story the world has ever known is wrapped up in these words, innocence and expectation and pain and suffering. The cradle is a picture, of course, of new life. And the cross is indeed a picture of death. It's all about Jesus Christ. This story unfolds, as we have seen, as the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, a virgin engaged to a man by the name of Joseph. And the scripture verses that we're so familiar with in Luke 1, 30 through 33, and the angel of the Lord said to Mary, do not be afraid, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. <laughs> I'm just thinking, wow, what a heavy responsibility this announcement brings to a young girl by the name of Mary in this small town that's, as far as Israel is concerned, is very insignificant, and that Mary willingly said, humbly responds, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, let what you said be done unto me. Mary, she just had to have read that Isaiah 7.14 that was written 700 years before this happened because so many Jewish girls were waiting for this to happen because they knew that the Messiah would come because Isaiah 7.14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign the virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and you shall call him Emmanuel. She must have read that time and time again. Next, we find, you saw how Joseph was struggling, going around in, in a circle, worrying about this. He had to be struggling that his fiancée was, was pregnant and what should he do? But then in Matthew 1, 20 through 21, we find 
that after he considered this, he was sleeping, the angel of the Lord came up to him and he said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home with you to be your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name of Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. I can only imagine again what went through Joseph's mind. I was worried if I had any of the skills to bring up my two boys, and here Joseph is to bring up the one that God sent to deliver his people from their sins. What a responsibility, yet without delay. Joseph obeys also and takes those steps of faith. And in that second chapter of Luke, we find that uh, the angels came to them and to the shepherds and said, do not be afraid. So many times in the scripture, when the angels come or an angel comes and says, do not be afraid because... I'm sure that is an awesome experience. I bring you good news of great joy for all of the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior is born unto you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will see the babe wrapped in clothes or swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Now remember the words that the angel gave to Joseph, Mary shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus was born so that he could die for you and I. <laughs> and the great reality, praise the Lord, is that Jesus' death is not the end of this story. It's the pivotal part, the most important part within the story of Christ's provision for our salvation. <laughs> it was part of that process of securing our salvation. Christ was nailed to the cross, pierced with a spear in the side to make sure that he was dead, placed in the tomb, sealed with a huge rock that only several men could remove, and guarded by soldiers so that no one could take him away from the tomb. But as he said, he arose on that third day, claiming victory over death, leaving the tomb empty, the evidence of a risen, living Savior. Christ had conquered death just as he said he would. He rose from the dead. He appeared to his disciples. He appeared to hundreds of others just as he said he would. The purpose of which Christ came was to die, to pay the penalty for your sin and for my sin. <laughs> Don't overlook the journey of the cradle to the cross. Stop and look at that empty cross. All the suffering that Christ bore on our behalf. Then keep on going from that cross to the tomb and, and just peer, just look inside that tomb for just a minute and see him no more. And rejoice that he lives but there is more continue on to that mountaintop where he ascended to be with his father victoriously returning to his father from the cradle to the cross we see how Christ lived as a perfect example and how he how he died as a perfect sacrifice and then he triumphed over the tomb. We see that he lives as a conquering king, and he saves as a perfect 
Savior. Remember that there is a Christ in Christmas. There is a, that he is the reason for this particular season. Celebrate him as the greatest gift ever given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that I love this word, whosoever, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because of God's death on the cross, we can enjoy the cradle of the new birth in Christ and live with Christ in a life that never ends. We can live with him on earth, and then we can live with him in eternity in heaven. Do you have a relationship with this Christ that I'm speaking of? Have you ever received the greatest gift that has ever been given? Consider Christ's word to this important religious man when he was asking Jesus some important questions about life. And Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again, born in a heavenly way, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Have you responded when Christ says, Come unto me, all of you who are that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace that the world has never heard of. Christ's invitation demands a response because he said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Have you placed your faith in this Christ that came to give his life for you? The Christmas story is about the greatest gift that has ever been given, and his name is Jesus. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never abandon you, never fail you. And in him, you will find contentment, peace, joy, and love. If you have never received this great gift, please do so today. Let's sing together. The first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no hell no hell no
the king of Israel born is your king we would be remiss if before this service ended if we didn't give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your king you know there's this song we sing every year you know the lyrics joy to the world the Lord has come let earth receive her king you know what that's saying really simply it's whatever is going on in your life don't you realize that these people that were part of this story they had messes going on in their life they had problems going on in their life they had trouble going on in their life but in the midst of our mess a king is born for us let earth receive her king. The simple message of Christmas is receive Jesus as your king right in the middle of your mess, right in the middle of your trouble. You don't have to get it all right before you come to God. Just come to him as you are. The next line of the song is, let every heart prepare him room. Is there room in your heart right now for Jesus? Before we close this service, would you just bow with me in prayer right now? And if you know Jesus is not in your heart, if he's not part of your life, if you haven't declared him as your Lord and the King, then I just invite you right now to do that. And to do that, to make room for him, it just starts with this. You have to recognize that you need that King that you need God. I mean, it's not a difficult thing for us to understand, but sometimes our pride just makes a block in our hearts so that we don't say, I need God. Like, I'm not enough on my own. I've messed up. I have sinned. I'm not right with God on my own. I need God. If you want Jesus to be in your life, if you want him, if you want to declare him as your king and Lord and make room for him today, would you just tell him that in your heart right now? God, I need you. Just say that in prayer to the Lord. And right now in your heart, acknowledge to the Lord, God, I'm a sinner and my sin has messed up my relationship with you. God, please forgive me for my sin. Would you acknowledge that in your heart to the Lord right now? And then here's how you make room for Jesus. And if you do this, he'll come in and change your life. Just tell him, Jesus, I recognize you're the only solution to my problems. You're the only solution to my sin. You're the only solution to my mess. Jesus, save me. Would you pray that to the Lord right now? Jesus, save me. Well, look up at me for just a moment. If you just prayed that prayer, 
with sincerity in your heart to the Lord. The Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Bible says if we will confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, if we'll believe this story of the journey from a manger to a cross, to a tomb, to a resurrected Savior who lives today, if we'll believe that story, God will forgive us our sins and make us a new creation in Christ. That's the greatest gift of Christmas. And if you believe that in your heart today and you prayed that prayer with sincerity, God is doing that for you. He has done that for you. And we rejoice in that with you. And we want you to know that that's what church is about. It's a community of people whose hearts are tied together by the work of Jesus and what he's done for us. And we want to come alongside you and help you in your journey to follow God, to know God, to walk in the new life that God has prepared for you as you receive Jesus our Lord and King. We invite you to be part of that. We want you to be part of that. And the best thing you could do is just take the next step in following Jesus. Come and talk to me or one of our pastors. Let us know that you are following Jesus today, and we'll help you follow him in baptism. And we'll help you connect with a small group. And we'll help you get connected in Bible reading. And you can begin this journey of knowing God more and more and more. Don't miss that. Don't miss the best part of Christmas. We invite you, come and see, come and seek what God has done. Now, church, I encourage you as we go, we just sang that song, The First Noel. It says, let us all in one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord. You know, the world is looking for answers in unity the world is looking for what could unite us, what could make us one, and I want you to know that we have the answer, that the answer isn't found in what the world is arguing about. You're not going to find the answer on a Facebook comment stream that goes miles long as people debate all these issues online. It's not there. It's not in the solutions of this world. We have the answer for unity, and that answer is let us all in one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord. As we praise and exalt Jesus, he draws our hearts together in one accord. I want to encourage you, church, rejoice in your Savior this Christmas. Remember what Christ has done praise and exalt the name of Jesus. Do it in your homes with your family this Christmas. Do it on Christmas Eve at the candlelight service. Make space for remembering and leading your family to remember what this is really all about. If you will do that, you will be blessed. Well, thank you for being here with us this morning. If you have decided to follow Jesus, don't keep it quiet. Tell the people you came with Come and tell us, and we'll celebrate with you. Can we give one more round of applause for everyone who put work into today? Great job. And let's do this. Uh, camera guys, let's get a shot of our auditorium here, if we can go to this camera. And let's just all together, for everyone who's joining us online, let's say Merry Christmas. So when this light over here turns red, Joe, can we get the shot there? Here we go. Ready? Let's say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There are some cookies and hot drinks for you in the back. Thank you for being here today. You are dismissed.